are wolves really dangerous? The short answer is yes, if you're unlucky enough to run into the wrong one. And by unlucky, I mean landing in North America 10,000 years ago. While today's wolves try their best to avoid humans and mind their own business, these wolves would have not cared about that. In fact, these wolves went up against anything that stood in their way, and they grew to such sizes that at some point, even mammoths seemed like prey to them. And some of these unique wolves aren't even that old, having gone extinct in just the last century. So, let's start off with one of the recently extinct species on our list. Canis lupus floridanus was a very unique subspecies of the red wolf that inhabited regions spanning Maine and Ohio, including areas near the St. Lucia River and the Indian River Lagoon. Nowadays, red wolves are an intermediate between coyotes and gray wolves, but this was not the case for the black wolf, since it had a lot of points on the gray wolf. For starters, even though the gray wolf is called the gray wolf, its subspecies vary widely in color, but the Florida black wolf was the only wolf to be exclusively black, distinguishing it from other wolf subspecies. But that was not its only distinction from the gray wolf. Even in terms of size, the Florida black wolf's height ranged from 2.1 to 2.8 feet, or 0.65 to 0.85 meters, with weights between 97 to 194 pounds, or 48 to 88 kilograms. For comparison, modern gray wolves typically stand between 2 to 2.5 feet or 0.6 to 0.7 meters tall at the shoulder and weigh between 65 to 175 pounds or 30 to 80 kilograms. Still, both the Florida black wolf and modern-day gray wolves possessed robust builds and powerful jaws equipped with sharp teeth for hunting and consuming prey. But the larger size of the Florida black wolf suggests it would have been even better suited for taking down larger prey, such as deer, or even larger mammals like moose, which were abundant in its habitat. The sheer size difference can tell you enough about its dominance, but even its natural color gave it a major upper hand. See, the Florida black wolf was predominantly black, while gray wolves normally have a grayish-brown coat. The darker color automatically provided the Florida black wolf with a natural camouflage, especially at night, making it a much deadlier predator. Unfortunately, the species went extinct in 1934 due to the crowding out of its habitat and hunting. But hey, at least the humans got to see this beautiful animal. I can't say the same for the next wolf on our list. And trust me, it's a good thing humans didn't run into this one. Canis armbruster was a wolf that hunted all over North America during the Pleistocene, approximately 1.8 to 0.3 million years ago. How did it manage to survive for so long? It's simple, Armbruster's wolf was not afraid of anything. Physically, Armbruster's wolf was larger and heavier than its cousin, the gray wolf. Fossil records indicate it could weigh up to 33 pounds or 15 kilograms more than the gray wolf, with estimates ranging from 120 pounds or 54.4 kilograms to 140 pounds or 63.1 kilograms. If that doesn't seem like a big difference, wait till you hear what it preyed on, and it'll all become clear. Dietary analysis indicates that Armbruster's wolf likely preyed upon a variety of large mammals, including even the 11-foot or 3.3-meter-tall mammoths. Another distinction was its narrower snout compared to the gray wolf. While this feature does suggest a lower bite force, at the same time, it could have facilitated more precise biting and tearing of flesh so it would have taken it a few tries to take down a mammoth. But you can bet it got the job done. If you're still not convinced though, this last tidbit might help you. The Armbruster's wolf is thought to be the ancestor of the dire wolf, one of the deadliest prehistoric carnivores in North America. We'll talk in detail about the dire wolf later on, so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video. Coming back to Armbruster's wolf, sure, it might have been bigger than your average gray wolf, but it doesn't even come close to matching the size of. Canis lupus alsus is literally only known for its huge size and is thought to be one of the largest wolf subspecies ever identified. Measurements suggest it ranged from 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters in length from nose to tail end, with a shoulder height of 3 to 3.6 feet or 0.9 to 1.1 meters. Its weight was estimated to be between 150 to 200 pounds 
or 68 to 90.7 kilograms, potentially making it comparable and even bigger in size to some dire wolves. As the name suggests, this wolf subspecies inhabited the Kenai Peninsula, where it heavily relied on the abundant moose population for sustenance. In fact, that's where its scientific name comes from, with alsus meaning moose. And in case I need to jog your memory, a moose measures up to seven feet tall and weighs more than a thousand pounds or 450 kilograms. And yet it was this wolf's favorite meal. Not for too long though. Wolves were once plentiful on the Kenai Peninsula until around 1900. However, the discovery of gold in 1895 led to concerns among miners about rabies, prompting widespread efforts to poison, hunt, and trap these wolves. By 1915, these actions had effectively gotten rid of wolves from the entire region. As a result, the Kenai Peninsula wolf was officially declared extinct in 1925. Canis lupus bernardus was another one of the largest wolf species out there. Standing about 3.9 feet or 1.2 meters tall and measuring 5.9 feet or 1.8 meters in length from the tip of its nose to the end of its tail, it weighed between 59 to 110 pounds or 27 to 50 kilograms. The sheer size alone would have helped make this wolf's life a lot easier. For one, its large size would have instilled fear in potential prey making them much less likely to resist or retaliate during an attack. Plus, larger size often goes hand in hand with greater strength. So this wolf wouldn't have had any problem bringing down larger prey animals. And considering its habitat, Bernard's wolf couldn't have asked for a better coat color. See, the Bernard's wolf was found in the Arctic islands of Canada, particularly on the Banks and Victoria Islands, and these were mostly snowy regions. Ironically, it had a thick white coat with a black stripe along the spine, which would have provided the best camouflage in snowy environments. What's more is that its skull is described as long and narrow, with a slender rostrum and extremely large upper and lower canaceals. Now let me explain it to you in English. A slender rostrum or snout means more precise targeting of specific areas of prey animals such as vital organs or vulnerable points, while minimizing the risk of injury to the wolf itself. Similarly, extremely large canaceals indicate a strong adaptation for shearing and tearing flesh. See, canaceal teeth are specialized for slicing through tough meat and bone, so the bigger they are, the better. Not only would this have allowed the wolf to disable its prey, but also to extract the maximum nutrition from the flesh, so, which poor animals fell to the bite of this beast? The primary diet of the Bernard's wolf consisted of hooved mammals, such as elk, mule deer, and white-tailed deer. However, much like most wolves on our list, this particular one was also the victim of a huge massacre between 1918 to 1952 and is now extinct. But you know which wolf would have pounced on humans before they could reach for their guns? This towering predator of the late Pleistocene terrorized eastern Beringia. Spanning from Alaska all the way to northwestern Canada, it stood as tall as a human waist high. That's over more than 3 feet, or 0.9 meters, and boasted a weight comparable to the modern Alaskan interior wolf, with males even reaching up to 95 pounds, or 43 kilograms. Sure, its weight wasn't such a big deal, but it made up for that with its short, broad skull and powerful jaws filled with large canaceal teeth specially adapted for bone-crushing capabilities. And the Beringian wolf needed these characteristics since it thrived in a very unique habitat, characterized by a vast, cold, and dry ecosystem filled with large animals like steppe bison, Yukon horse, and even the woolly mammoth. And despite their size, none of these animals could dare take on the Beringian wolf. Then again, it's not like it would have given them the chance in the first place Evidence suggests that the Beringian wolf was a hypercarnivore, meaning it relied only on large animals for sustenance. Analysis of bone collagen has indicated a diet focused on steppe bison and Yukon horse, with occasional consumption of woodland muskox and mammoth. Its longer premolars and larger canaceal teeth were no less than a butcher's knife, and they made sure that no bone was left to waste. But despite its prowess as a predator, the Beringian wolf faced challenges that led to its eventual extinction. As the last glacial period came towards an end and all the large animal populations became endangered, the Beringian wolf's special abilities became more of a burden. 
increased competition from other carnivores, such as the giant short-faced bear and humans, made things even worse, to the point that this apex predator of the Ice Age ultimately went extinct. But maybe, if it had lived alongside and competed for food with this next wolf, it would have vanished off the face of the Earth long before the Ice Age. So at the number one spot, we have in case you're wondering, yes, this is the same dire wolf from Game of Thrones. However, unlike the show, the real dire wolf was not the size of a horse. In fact, this wolf closely resembled modern grey wolves, but that's the only comparison you can make. Apart from their size, dire wolves, literally meaning terrible wolves, were nothing short of what you saw in Game of Thrones. These prehistoric canines roamed during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene periods, with the last ones living around 9,500 years ago. Dire wolves were widespread across North and South America, and the recent finding of a dire wolf skull in China suggests that they might have also roamed in Eurasia. The dire wolf had an average weight of around 150 pounds, or 68 kilograms, with some reaching weights of up to 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms which is notably heavier than modern grey wolves. Despite this weight difference, dire wolves were only slightly larger in size compared to present-day grey wolves. The average dire wolf stood at a height of about 2.25 to 2.7 feet, or 0.6 to 0.8 meters at the shoulders, and measured 5 to 6.6 .6 feet, or 1.5 to 2 meters in length, from head to tail. For context, the largest northwestern wolves today stand at a shoulder height of about 3 feet or 0.9 meters, with a body length of 5.75 feet or 1.8 meters. So what exactly was so special about them? Apart from their immense weight and smaller height, which gave dire wolves an incredibly stocky build, their skulls could reach lengths of up to 12 inches or 30 centimeters. They also had larger teeth, so large that they be visible from the outside kind of like the saber-toothed cats, and these long canines and molars were specifically designed for crushing bones and consuming the tough carcasses of their prey. In fact, their bite force has been estimated to be over 1,200 psi, which is even more than that of a grizzly bear's. Based on the large size of this prehistoric wolf, experts have estimated that they most likely targeted prey within a size range of about 660 to 1,320 pounds, or 300 to 600 kilograms. This includes huge mammals like camels, bison, western horses, and even mammoths. Plus, since other Pleistocene hypercarnivores such as the American lion and Smilodon had a very similar diet, the dire wolves, despite being much smaller than these beasts, would have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And from the looks of it, they might have even won. Well, just for a short period of time. Over 9,000 years ago, most large herbivorous species in the Americas perished, probably due to overexploitation by newly arrived humans and changing climate conditions. With their primary food sources disappearing, dire wolves also faced extinction because these beasts could not have survived on rodents and deer. They were literally born to take on the biggest prey out there. And that's a wrap. Which one of these extinct wolf species impressed you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.